So, as my exciting adventure to CES in Las Vegas, part of it is speaking with these lovely gentlemen. Hi. So, Hi. Uh, if you want to introduce yourselves. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm Dean. I work for Dixon's Retail and I'm looking for new innovation. Uh, Hi, I'm Dave. I work for Dixon's Retail and I'm also looking for new innovation at the show this year. So, how long have you been out here so far? A day. It's our first day. It's yeah. the first day. Yeah. Have you had a chance to leave this room or just leave this hall? Uh, We've just been there, so we've been up the stairs. That sounds exciting. Uh, yeah, it's exciting. Good stairs, stairs, stairs go. Cracking stairs. So in this hall, what, what, yeah. what's, what's this made up of here? Well, as you can see behind you, there's a lot of focus on health stuff this year. Okay. So we're going to have a really good look at that. Yeah. Um, I think that's a massively exciting category. Health stuff, as in sort of wearable technology? Yeah, so we think anything connected to a mobile phone, anything controlled by a mobile phone, fitness being a big part of that, we think there's going to be a lot of that. We think it's going to be really big. Which, are there any specific things you've seen that you're like, oh, we might want to try and steal that without giving anything away. I know there's, there's corporate stuff. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a few cool things. We've seen one today that you can talk to in the house and it will start to communicate with all sorts of smart devices you've got around. It'll actually turn your uh, temperature up or turn your temperature down. You don't need to go to pick up the device or go to the thermostat. Uh, that's from Ivy. Because what I find is that I, I'm worried about living on my own yeah. because I, I need people to talk to. Uh, otherwise, I go a bit weird. Oh, Ivy will so, definitely talk so to you. So Ivy will talk back. Yeah, so Ivy is, talks back. This is essentially the future. When I, we don't need people to just talk to talk to stuff. And yeah, it's like, like a, it's like Siri on steroids. Because <laughs> <laughs> she can actually do things. It's actually good to turn stuff on. Yeah, she turns yeah. the lights on. She turns uh, turns the temperature up and down. Um, unlocks your front door. Tell tells me. you the stock price. Tells you what the traffic's like out on the motorway. Uh, just links in with all these different services and it sits on your uh, camera top. There's another one. There's a little. I think it's here. I think it's down there. A little robot called Sphero. You see over there. Sphero. Oh, this is cool. a lot on my you YouTube channel. Very, yeah. very very good. Yeah. It's definitely going to see them. the augmented reality now. With as well, so with the, with the little yeah, the little speed 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 yeah, that's yes. right. And they yeah, send a little obvious. character around the floor, yeah. and yeah. brilliant, it's brilliant. Loads of fun. Is that is that is that something you guys have been looking at as well? Yeah, just for, for yeah, it's great. Future. It's great fun. I think, great fun. I think the thing is, you know, we sell a lot of tablets, we sell phones. You know, people spend a lot of money on these things. I think what's exciting about this is it's making a lot more of a smartphone. I think, it, and it's not just it's not just in a really practical way. You know, the home automation yeah. stuff's great, but I think all of those gadgets inside things. They really bring the phone and the yeah. tablet to life. So I think any, anything around that we would be really interested in. What I really like about Sphero is that not only can you use your phone to control the actual device, you can use the device to control the phone. Yeah, so you can start to use it like a controller. Really, you know, you don't have to touch for the tablet, you can sit there and all of a sudden you've got yourself a, a controller for the tablet. We've just come from San Francisco, we both bought a smartphone control from Lorienzo. Yeah. Excellent. So we're going to race those down the strip later. And people might people might say boys with their toys, but that obviously has you needed to buy that because it's an, it's, yeah. Well, because the Lamborghini's broken. Because the Lamborghini's broken. This is we we can't be Rational. expected to not have a remote control car. I don't know whether people appreciate this, but it's it's 2014 now. We can't be without. Really, it never control. goes away. No, it never goes. Did away. you have a look on the Sphero stand about their new one, which is like high speed? Yep. Yeah. The one you can change the tires. It's like a, a bonkers. Yeah, it's like a tube. Yeah, 10 miles an hour quicker, it goes at walls. It sounds good, I'm going to have to go and have a, have a look at this. So, in terms of making more out of your phone, have you seen any of the, there's a lot of photography gadgets that help you do that? You can take photos, sort of use the phone as a, as a second screen to your camera, have you seen any of that We stuff? haven't seen those yet, no, but... Well, we've literally been in the two halls up to now today, so... Okay. So, where's, what's the plan for the rest of the trip? So we're looking at all new tech, so we're looking at home automation, we're looking at smart devices like Dean was saying, we're looking at wearable technology, so we'll literally be going through every single hall, looking at new suppliers, new products, um, trying to work out what's right for our customers to get, to get that product ready. I think kids tech's really interesting, we're really interested to see what what they've done for kids in terms of applications. For education purposes? Or for well I think both at home and education stuff, okay. I, think there's, I think there's a couple of uh, halls here that have a specific focus on that, there's one called Mummy Tech I think we'll be really going to look yeah. at. And have you looked into any of the kind of smart home technologies? So you mentioned you know, using yeah. the phone and the heating, but there's other things that control appliances and oh, security, all that sort of stuff. Sort. So we've, we found a product that um, uh, controls your doorbell. It sounds really, really strange, but it's a Wi-Fi enabled doorbell. So you press the doorbell and it appears on your smartphone. It sounds sounds like there's no real need for that, but actually when you think about it, if you're outside of the house, if you're in the back garden, it straight appears on your smartphone. If you're out of the house, maybe you're travelling away somewhere, you can see just your front door. 
and then it actually links in with a lock on the door, so you can then control whether you want to let somebody into your house or not. Yeah. And there's things like that that we're seeing. The, the use case, that's the, I love that use case for when you, you have a parcel that you've, you've ordered something online, you have it delivered to your house, you miss the collection of it because yeah. you don't have an automated doorbell, and you have to drive further to get the thing from the collection yes. depot than you would have had yeah, to do to exactly. buy it in the first place. It's a massive pain in the ass. So that can be, uh, there's, a, there's a great use case for that. But do, you find, do people care about the home automation tech that much? I think the problem we, 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 we see with it is if it becomes boring and becomes technical. You know, a lot of the, we've been to a lot of home improvement stores out here. And they, they've got all of this stuff there already, but it's in really technical sections. Yeah. It's either in the doorbell section, it's in the lock section. I think what we've got to do, and I think our, our job as a retailer, is to make it really easy and simple. Because when you find out that you can save 25% of your heating and the thing happens to look really cool, and you show it on your smartphone to people. And if it's already controlling your remote controlled Enzo, ideally, yeah. Because that's something that we all have anyway, then that's going to make it easier. But one thing we don't think people want is probably 65 apps. Yeah. So that's the other thing. Can, is anybody going to make it easy for all this stuff to work together with one app? Yeah, I think, I think our job in the world is to make that a lot easier, to bring all those technologies into one. So if we can get to the point where we have a Dixon style app that controls all these different devices, then that really makes it easier for the consumer, and that's where we want to get into. I will wish you luck on that, because there's a lot of people trying to do <laughs> exactly the same thing. Well, I thought one more thing actually that we've seen, and I've tried it, that Oculus, the Oculus Rift gaming headset. Oh, they, they've apparently made it less headachey now. Have they? Yes. I went on a roller coaster on there the other day, and I was genuinely genuinely frightened. Wow. Maybe I've just got low tolerance. No, no, it's, it, was, it, was, it, was really it was it was really, really good. I think that's interesting. And we just uh, we just seen the uh, Valve guys with the Steam OS yes. all the machines up there. I think that could be exciting again. You know, there have been two new consoles, TVs. What do you, what, what do you stand on TVs? What, what, what excites you about the new TV? If anything, it doesn't have to be anything. For me, it's curved. Hmm? Why is that good? This is what I've been asking today. So, your eyes, when you look directly at a television, your eyes actually look in. So when you curve the screen, you get a much um, better picture looking at that product. Rather, when it's flat, your eyes actually don't sit directly flat in front of the screen at any point. So for rooms, and not everyone has one on the wall, right? So in rooms where you've got these products in the corner, it's great. You get a much better view area from everyone. Okay. What do you feel about these things that I've seen today? We've seen HD, UHD, QUHD, yeah. which I think probably stands for, for quite ultra. I have no idea what it's for. And um, OLED and all of these things that essentially just make the, the picture better. How, what, do you, does that does that interest you guys? Is that I mean you're probably going to have to stop it because it's the trend. Do, do, do customers want that? I think so. I mean, it looks outstanding. You know, you know, I think I think it's like anything. It's when it becomes affordable for people. It, it, it's a really good, I think it's starting to be a really good reason to buy, and that's what people are after. You know, it's a simple thing, but it's great screen resonance. People want sports and movies. Um, and all sorts of other questionable things. Yeah? All sorts of questionable things that you want. Actually. And other questionable things, which I, I, could, I couldn't possibly comment on. Of course. I think, uh, I, I think it's a nice simple thing. At the end of the day, a TV is about having a great picture and great sound. So the better the picture, you know, the more exciting it is. It gives, it gives customers a reason to upgrade. I think the other great thing about that tech is when you actually go and see it, it's noticeably different. So it's just one of those things when you walk in front of it and you look at that, you go, wow, there's something different about that. Irrelevant of what type of technology it is, you just look at it and say, that's that's incredible, it's vivid, sharp, it's yeah, immersive, as everyone keeps saying, but it's incredible. The most bonkers thing we saw today was 85, no, 100 and something inch OLED curve. A screen that curves and flattens by remote control. Ah, uh, yeah. So you can have flat or curves. Yes. It's just bonkers. I don't know why I need. I don't have a place in my house big enough to put a hundred. No. I don't TV. suppose many people do. Probably that. not. Probably no. not one for the masses. Maybe not. Okay. All right. Well, then, thanks. Thanks for talking to us. It's really interesting, and, uh, and we're going to see what else we can find and other weird and wonderful stuff. And uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah. Great. Right. Cheers. Cheers.